Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're here for the first time, welcome. If you haven't already, I'd really appreciate if you did subscribe to my channel so you can get the latest updates on things that I'm up to and more projects like this Pax Hack. If you haven't seen my original Pax Hack video, I'll put the before and after here because it was pretty amazing and became kind of like an Instagram and TikTok famous project. Um, which is amazing. So it definitely inspired this project, but you'll see the plan from the beginning of this project was quite similar to the other one. And as the video progresses, you'll notice that the plan ended up changing. And I'm so glad it did because I didn't want the two projects to be identical. This is Finnegan who also helps with a lot of my projects. Um, but anyways, I am not a professional. I'm just a DIYer. When we moved in here, I really didn't have that much skill with a lot of this. So this is all self-taught via YouTube and other DIYers videos. So some things that I do, a professional may do differently. I just wanted to give that, you know, little disclosure before I show you the rest of the video and what I ended up doing. Um, and also because the plan changed throughout the video, there's some things that I would have done earlier on. So I will explain that at the very end. Just so you understand how this works in case this is your first video, this is on our third floor. It is our guest room slash office space, and I am working away at it. And when we moved in, this Pax wardrobe was already here. There is a bathroom there. So what my plan is, is to move this pack system over a little bit because I don't like how it's overlapping the bed. I want it to be more like an office packs wardrobe. I bought a bunch of shelves for it recently, and it's going to be storage for crafts, um, for work stuff, for decorative accessories, and it's mostly hanging space right now, which isn't super useful for me. So I'm going to shift it over, and there is a vent right here. So I honestly can't move it too far over, but maybe a foot. And because of the low ceilings, when you open this door, it hits that. So I'm actually going to move this end section here because the door opens this way rather than the way that this door opens. So I think that's going to help. I also might raise it up because there's no um, crown molding in here like there is in our other sections of our house. You can see I also need to patch that, the beauty of old houses. Um, but there is baseboard. So I'm thinking if I raise it up and put baseboard, it will match the bottom and then the top will be flush with the ceiling. So it will look like it's meant to be. Um, and because if I move that to here, it should open fine. And then I'm going to remove these handles. I'm going to paint all of this and maybe add molding like I did downstairs. I'm not 100% sure, but that's kind of what I'm thinking. The plan obviously might change, but I'm just going to unload it today, see if I can move it over, and then kind of see where we're at. I never know exactly what I'm doing until I do it, so... That is the fun part of my projects. I never used to be a planner or someone who doesn't plan, but if I plan something like this, I honestly spend way too long procrastinating and planning and don't actually do it. So i rather just go for it and see what happens. I'll just show you the progress that I have been making. So um, I detached them. I removed the doors and the shelves. Um, and I switched the one from the end over so that when it opens up, it's not going to hit that. Let me just pop this out. And there we go. You can see this a little bit better. Um, so it definitely changes the dynamics of the room a little bit, but I think it's going to be overall better. It just feels less crowded over in this space. Um, and you can see it's only that much. You can see the old paint color. So I'm going to have to touch this up right here is the, this is a Chantilly lace and I don't know what that is, but anyways, so now I'm just trying to decide if I do want to put the base under it like I did with the Pax wardrobe downstairs, um, just because the ceilings are low in here. 
So it would be pretty challenging to get the two by fours underneath to bring it up so that the baseboard would continue. I think it's the right thing to do though. So I'm gonna have to try and figure that one out and set up the saw in the basement, which is not set up right now. Another thing aside from cleaning this that I wanna work on is let's look at the gap at the bottom because of the quarter round in the baseboard, but let's follow it up and see what happens. So it is on an angle, which means that these are not sitting properly. So what I did with the other ones, because I also didn't want to remove the original baseboard downstairs, is I put a block in behind and mounted through the block into the wall. And I'm going to do the same and then I will add some sort of trim along here just so that we cover up that gap because there's also a lot of dust back there that I vacuumed up. So. We will uh, also be working on that, and then there will be trim along, and I'm gonna have to cover up those holes um, that were created from joining these together when it was on the other side. So that is one of the annoying things that, I, that I've switched this, but I don't think it's a big deal. Nothing a little filler can't fix. I don't really like to give instructions on this sort of thing because I'm not a professional, I am just learning as I go and I learned this from our bookcase when I moved it from our bedroom when we moved into our dining room but when you want to raise something up like this you need to build a base and you want to make sure that the points of this that are touching the ground have support so the front and the back are both touching the ground but also these pieces that are coming down so we're going to have one of these two by fours at the front and the back, and then there's going to be cross supports where it's touching the ground. So we're going to have one here and let me just place the other ones and I can give you an idea. These aren't attached together and I didn't, one of the two by fours is like really crooked. I don't know why and how I ended up with it, but I found this other one in the basement. That's why they're different colors. Um, but that doesn't matter. So you can see, We've got a front piece and a back piece, and then the cross supports. So you can see that this is two wardrobes, and this section is much bigger than this section, and this is the middle support that I've got there. So I am going to screw these all together, um, and I want to make sure the screws aren't sticking out, so I'll show you that. Um, and then once they're all attached together, we can push it underneath the wardrobe. It'll have to be lifted, so I'll need some help. Um, and then from there, we will work on attaching this to the wall. Also mentioned we obviously want screws that are going to go through this and to the other piece. So I have this IKEA kit of screws that I always use. and um, So I think I'm going to use these big ones because they are going to go through into the other piece of wood. And I'll probably do two screws um, on each piece into the two by four. So two, 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 two. Hopefully that makes sense. I've drilled all of the holes that are gonna just guide the screw. So the holes just a little tiny bit smaller than the screw. And then what I'm gonna do because I want this head of the screw to be flush into the wood is I'm gonna drill a bigger hole that's approximately the size of the head to make a countersunk screw hole. Um, you can actually buy things that do this as you drill. Um, so this goes into this piece. So then it, you can measure it so it's the right length of the screw. And as you're drilling with this, this part makes a countersunk hole. It's just not big enough for these screws and so I just have the one, but I need to get some bigger ones, clearly. So that is all screwed together. I'm just going to take a lunch break, but then I think I'm going to have to move this one out of the way because it's the lightest, and then I'm going to get Chris to help me lift this onto this, and then that one back on top. It'll be right against the wall, and then we can, um, or I can, uh, attach it to the wall, and we'll be very much on our way. And I'll probably have to go to the hardware store to get some baseboard. 
I'll also mention quickly that uh, when you're putting the 2x4 base down, you should make sure that it's level. Um, and if it's not, you should put some shims just to make sure that it is so that when everything is said and done, that all of your lines are straight and level against other straight areas in your room. Um, because that has happened to me before. So I got the furthest wardrobe on the base. And before I put the other one, I'm actually gonna use some blocks of wood. They look like they're curved, they're not. Um, to space out the top like we talked about where it mounts. So where it mounts at the top corner, you can see right there, um, I'm gonna put probably about two pieces of wood because that's how out it is behind there and screw into that and then into the wall. Um, I think it'll be too difficult once the other wardrobe's up, so that's why I'm doing it that way. That goes attached to the wall and the little spacer blocks are in behind and I double checked with the level with this top one against this just to make sure and it is perfectly level now so we are in good shape it's mounted and I went and picked up the baseboard because <laughs> my drill ran out of battery I am really bad with charging it the only thing I have to do now is attach them together um, which maybe you're supposed to do before you attach it to the wall, but, uh, nevertheless, I can minorly adjust it. There's a little bit of wiggle room, so maybe I'll loosen it and, um, attach them together, but I'm just going to take a tea break. So it is up. I attach them together. Um, I probably, actually, I should probably attach this. For whatever reason, there was only two for the bottom and two for the top, reverse of how I just showed you. Um, so I think I might just put a screw through it. So let me do that. Um, and then I took out the remaining bars that were on there. And the next step that I think I'm going to do, um, I guess I should put that section back in. Kind of wishing I didn't decide to stick with that. Uh, and had bought more shelves. But anyways, I'm going to put that back in. Um, then I'm going to put the doors on and just make sure that the baseboard works. I mean, this is exactly what I did downstairs, but the packs downstairs in the bedroom was newer. So there's an off chance that there's a slight variation in height, but I do have a piece to try with the doors on, see where we're at. And then I also probably have some trim that I can put at the back here. Um, so that would be good. And we're in good shape. Pretty, pretty happy with a day's work. And then tomorrow, maybe I can work on priming it. Um, and then maybe even put a first coat on. And then once that's done, we can decide what trim we're going to put on the front. Because I'm not really sure what I'm thinking or the trim if I want to do it the same as downstairs or something different. Part of me thinks I should do something a bit different. The baseboard that I got um, is a little bit too tall and I don't really want to cut the bottom off, but also I didn't realize the baseboard was different up here than possibly even the other room. So it's not what I thought it was. So um, I did funnily enough, stare at another one that was there at the store that looked more like this and was the right height. So I am uh, going back. I got the other baseboard from the hardware store. It's not a perfect match, but it's going to work. And my battery is starting to run low, so I'm going to keep this snappy and short. I cut it on the miter saw. 
on a 45 degree angle I just changed the blade to cut like this rather than this and then for the side pieces I wanted it to go right back to the wall and then I cut with the jigsaw a little curve for that cord around so this is all lined up now and I'm going to use the brad nailer just to put it in and then I guess I ought to cut some trim to cover up those gaps maybe fill some holes and then probably call it a night we'll see where we get to but it's getting dark in this room the baseboard is on it's looking really good I do need to caulk and fill the nail head holes but it's looking really good and I realized I never explained why I decided to leave the gap there um in a newer home or maybe in other people's homes they might cut the baseboard that's on the wall so that this could go completely flush against the wall but these baseboards have been here for over 100 years so number one they would be pretty hard to take off but number two who knows what I may want to do 10 years down the road maybe I don't want this wardrobe in here and I would be pretty annoyed with myself if I took this off and then eventually needed it and I don't want to worry about keeping a piece like that so I think that this is the best decision this is what I did in our bedroom as well I just think respecting our old home is what is best I decided on Saturday night to really have a wild one and uh put all the shelves in which was an awful task the little things that ikea gives you are really hard to push in so my fingers are feeling really sore um but i just wanted to get that mess cleaned up and uh finnegan is enjoying the mess over there um but i feel like all the things that i have left to do don't really impact the inside like i want to paint the doors but I can still paint the doors if there's stuff inside. So that's the plan. Um, and I'm still not sure what I'm going to do with the gap, um, as well as the one on top, but we'll figure that out. Overall, liking how this is, though. I finished putting all the shelves in last night, and it was such an awful job. And I was going to fill them all last night, but I thought it'd be better to do in daylight. Um, so I can also just film it. So I left this section. I think maybe I mentioned, I thought maybe because my sewing machine and stuff can go in here, maybe fabrics can hang there or extra blankets because I'm going to probably store a lot of styling accessories in here. And then I also have this one. Some of this is going to be shared with Chris. Um, initially I was thinking this side and this would be all my stuff, but we'll see what happens. wanted to quickly give you an update on this gap so I had some of this in the basement from when I did the board and batten in the powder room downstairs so I thought I would just use that to fill the gap and then I cut it a little bit for the baseboard so it's going to run from the baseboard all the way to the ceiling and then I have these other pieces of wood that I again already had and um these are going to fill a gap on the top. I wasn't sure if I was going to fill it, but I think I may as well just do it. So that's what I am working on. And to do the pieces on the top, I'm going to take some scrap pieces of wood and from the inside of the closet, drill up into them. And then the front side, I'll be able to nail those finishing pieces into this so that it's pushing against something if that makes any sense i'm just getting ready to paint this wardrobe i've already put the primer coat on which is the bin zinser that i've used before um where's the can of it this is what i used on the cabinets in the bathroom and i think it's holding up pretty well but i'm painting a color on this a color guys so let me show you what it is. I have been debating this and like so nervous about this, but because this isn't our primary area of our home, I decided I want to take more risks, try more out there things, 
and it's not the end of the world if it doesn't work out. So that's what we're going with. So the color I'm using is this Ferro and Ball French Gray, which you can't really see very well. But rather than get it from Ferro and Ball, which I discovered we apparently have one in Toronto, um, I got it color matched at the hardware store. Um, I don't know what this is. It isn't a perfect match. When I put it in daylight, it looks like this one's a little bit lighter, but I'm okay with that. It's not a big deal. But I fell in love with this color when my friend on Instagram, Miss Jessica Darling, painted her living room this color, and I have been obsessed with it since. So we're going to try it. I actually may paint an entire room this color. Uh, I still won't get the Pharaoh and Ball. I don't think. I think it's way more money. I will still get a color match, but... That is the plan. Also, you can see how like crazy the floors are up here. Like this is in painted in. Anyways, that is the charm of this painted floor situation up here. Anyways, I'm gonna paint this. I'm really nervous and excited. So I'm painting the whole thing and then I'm gonna put the panel molding. The problem with the panel molding is the one I usually use is out of stock. It always has that problem. But I found one at the hardware store near me that's a little bit cheaper and actually wider. Just a little bit nervous um, that it's too wide. And it's thicker. So, I don't know. Like, it might look good. I maybe should just do it. Just this whole project. Just go with it and don't question it. We'll see. I'm just sitting at my desk realizing I didn't give you an update on this. So I painted one coat um, on this side and then I went back and did a second coat on there and it's just not the color I thought it was going to be. Honestly, a little bit disappointed. I don't know if it just wasn't color matched well or if it just doesn't look good in this light. I didn't take my own advice and get a sample just because I'm more interested in just winging it. So now I've got to go get another paint. Um just don't know what color so I'm a little bit annoyed but also I think I maybe have changed direction on what I'm doing with this which is interesting and I'm a little bit nervous about it but when I have a better sense of that I will let you know having such a crisis over paint colors it's ridiculous I just went to the paint store to get a bunch of sample chips um, of different greens and they didn't have the one that I wanted which was called Paris Rain. Um, and on a whim, I picked this one, which on camera looks the same. Uh, there, you could, this is not picking it up. Um, hmm, it's interesting. It is kind of like a bluey, greeny gray, but like, there you go, you can kind of see it. Um, the problem I'm having is when I look at it right by a window, it looks very pale. Here are all the chips. So I'm sitting at my desk right by the window and the little dabs of paint, um, that is the Pharaoh and Ball and that is the one that I had color matched. So you can see they're slightly different. This one's greener, this one's grayer. And then it's on the chips just so that I could kind of figure out what was going on in my mind. Um, so this is October Mist, which is the color of the year for Benjamin Moore. And this is a slightly lighter color, which I think I like. I think it's the color that I want. So I'm just hesitant to go through all of this again. Um, but also, it's just, I think, to do with where this is in the bedroom. Here we go for round two. The man of the paint store said, isn't this really similar to the color you already got? Yes, sir. Let's see how it turns out. The one coat is already dry and it looks so good. Really, really happy with this color. It's amazing how similar it was to the other color, but how much better it looks. So I'm probably going to give it another coat. I mean, it's been an, an hour and a half, I think, since I finished. And it feels dry, so I think I can go ahead with that. But I also need to 
figure out how I want to add shaker. It's going to have shaker all around it. Um, so yeah, I'm going to figure that out. I figured out what I'm going to use for the shaker. I went to Home Depot and I found a sheet of hardboard that was eight feet long and I asked if the guy there was busy if he would be able to cut it for me so he did so they're cut um, two and a half inches wide and I got 10 strips cut there was definitely more than um, I could have done way more I just felt bad for wasting the guy's time um, but that will work perfectly for here and um then I'm gonna I just I didn't get them cut to cut the length I can do that myself um I may even use the miter box I think that'll be fine and um I think I'm gonna glue it up and then paint it I'm glad I already painted the wardrobe I think that makes it a little bit easier but I think um this should work and the doors will still open I tested it with this which is thicker and this was about the max I could do I tried that white piece there um how wide was this this was half an inch and this was just about too thick this was an eighth of no a quarter of an inch which worked and I would have bought this in quarter of an inch if they had it but I didn't see any so I went with the eight eighth of an inch thickness I'll also mention that for one sheet of this, it was only $17. So for all of this, it was 17 around $17 with tax. And the alternative that I was looking at was probably $25 for just one sheet for one like strip. So I'm really glad I went to the effort to figure out to use hardboard. All of that is up now. Um, I used a nail gun, but I think it would have been better if I glued. I did have to glue some bits because they started to pop out. So maybe if I had done a combination, it would have been good. Um, but I am going to use some caulking now. Uh, just the Alex Flex that I always use just to fill in any gaps and also just give it a little more strength because now I'm a bit nervous. Um, and then... I should be good to uh, paint. Um, I might need to also fill the nail heads, but they're really tiny nails, so we'll see. And then when the latches come that I ordered, the one set of latches will latch there. But there's nothing for the side to latch onto, so I'm going to mount something, probably even another one of these, right here. I'm just waiting for the little piece to come so I can see if it fits. And then I'm going to put it there so it latches. I know that's a bit strange, but I really had this vision in my head and that's how it's gonna be i've caulked i filled i think i'm gonna call it a night and then paint this i'm hoping the latches come in good time tomorrow but luck isn't always on my side so i'm not holding my breath um in which case i'll have to post this on monday rather than sunday but i am hoping for the best and i'm gonna do a cool little detail up there so, I will get to that tomorrow once all of this is painted. It is the next day and I wanted to show you how everything's looking. I'm just about to give this a light sand and then paint. Um, it's looking good. I don't know when those latches are coming, but I do want to wait for them to arrive to add that piece on the side. But I am, after I've painted this, going to put that little detail on that I was talking about. I did a coat of paint and then decided some spots needed more caulk and filler, which isn't ideal, but it is what it is. So I've just done that, and while it's drying, um, I think I should be able to give it another coat pretty soon. But I don't know if I've told you the inspo for this, but it changed halfway through the project. So I'll put it up on the screen really quick. Um, so 
I like these like countryside cabinets that have these holes. So the original inspo had them, I think here. And then I found another inspo that had them up here. And I was a little bit terrified of drilling into this. Maybe I will in the future, but I was like, wait a minute. Especially at the top, you would not notice if it was drawn on. And then I thought, how am I going to get a perfect circle? And when I was laying in bed the other night, I remembered, hey, I went to design school and did a bunch of drafting, and I guarantee I have a circle thing. And I found it in my bin of drafting tools. So I'm going to find the perfect circle, figure out how to perfectly draw it on each one, and then I'm going to draw it on with Sharpie. And then we're going to see what we think. I don't think we'll have the overall feel until the latches come. So we'll see about that, but I think it's going to look good. I have a very technical paper folding spacing idea. Um, so I'm thinking I'll either make a hole in the middle to make a dot so that I can use this on the wardrobe but still have the spacing right, or maybe I'll cut out the insides of the circle. Just not 100% sure on that yet. The latch that I ordered on Amazon came. I would have ordered the ones that I have in the kitchen, but those would have taken a lot longer shipping and this was almost next day. So um, I'm going to put these on the cabinet here and here. And then on this side, I need something to put the little piece on. So I have this, which is the perfect thickness to add onto the side. Um, but the piece that's at the back is a little bit skinnier. It's the same width. Here's a cutoff from it. See, it's the same width this way, but the thickness is slightly different. So I'm thinking of using the thicker one. It will show you that this does just fit, but it's a little bit nervous about it. Just putting these latches on the door and honestly I'm still freaked out from when I did it in the kitchen it was so scary but it's looking good I'm sure it's gonna be fine and if I've learned anything you need to drill the hole a little bit bigger which is not what you would think but anyways with brass screws they seem to break it is all finished and I love how it turned out I don't think you can tell that those holes are drawn on and I can always cut them eventually or paint over them we will see how I feel about that. I love the latches. I'm really glad I decided to go with that. And I love how this piece looks on the side, allowing me to add that latch. I think it looks great. It's a great addition to my office space. The baseboard looks great, so I'm also glad I did decided to do that. And when I was editing this, I realized I never really talked about the upper piece but I just put a piece of trim against those blocks um and it turned out really well and then because I had the filler piece along the back and then I put the one at the side I ended up putting some at the top and at the bottom um so I think that that turned out really well so this room is really coming together and the next project is going to be where I've got all of the clutter stored right now. So you guys can come back to see how I transform this, but I'm really excited about it. This room is really coming together. I also will mention one thing. So the shaker that I added on to here, I couldn't have gone any thicker in the end. Um, I had to work on the spacing, but you can see it gets quite close to the other door when I open it. So any thicker wouldn't have worked. Uh, and I think what I ended up choosing was a great budget-friendly option. This honestly didn't cost me that much to do. Um, I think the most expensive part was the latches. I will link them. They're from Amazon. Uh, I think they're really good quality. 
um, the other cost of the baseboard, the shaker, um, the trim I already had for the sides, and then the paint, which I ended up costing, cost double because I had to buy another can because the first one didn't work out. But overall, really happy with it. I hope you guys enjoyed a second take on the Pax hack. I also thought I would do a wide angle lens so you could get a better look at this and how the room is shaping up. One thing that I think I may end up doing and I didn't have enough time to do is continuing this beadboard along here, but only half of the wall and then putting um, a piece of wood in a peg rail. And I actually think I might do it behind the door here too. Um, I just think it would look nice, but I also think it'd be really functional, maybe even with a little shelf so I can put some artwork above it um, because that is a shower room, bathroom, um, where the toilet, the sink, and the shower are all in one. So you can't keep any um, towels in there. So I think it'd be useful if that room is ever used for a shower to have a towel rack outside. And then on this side, it would just be nice to hang extra things. Um, just because this is technically a guest room and I just filled the closet with all of my office stuff. At least someone would be able to hang up a few things if they were staying for the weekend. So that is the thought on that. So hopefully I'll get that done. I was hoping later today I could actually go and do it, but I really wanted to get this video out to you. So if you are looking for an update on that, you can check Instagram or come back and watch one of my other videos. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was a lot of fun to have a second attempt at a PAX hack, and I love that they're so different. Of course, because my plan changed from beginning to end, there are some things that I would probably do in a different order, such as adding that side panel for the um, latch to hook onto. That should have been done much earlier on, um, probably before I put the baseboard on. So if you are wanting to attempt something very similar, I would probably advise that be something that you do um, before the baseboard so that the baseboard will come out a little bit and account for all of that. Um, also, make sure that when you're putting shaker on that you are making sure the doors can still open because um, if you don't, obviously it will ruin the shaker and I just don't want you to run into any problems. So just make sure that you're checking everything as you progress. Uh, and I would definitely recommend using no more nails or some sort of glue to attach the shaker, um, as well as nailing. I don't even know that nailing is necessarily something that you need to do. Um, otherwise, I just think you would be holding the pieces on while they glue or taping them or something. So just an idea. I hope this was super helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment box.